Hi, my name is Justinus Mishakis, and I'm Head of Artificial Intelligence at FNP Robotics. And today I would like to present to you our uh, professional personal robot, Leo, which is uh, specifically designed for human-robot interaction and healthcare applications. So, as you can see, Leo is quite a complex system containing of many components. Let's take a look at the robot in a bit more detail. Uh, starting with the mobile platform. So as mentioned, for autonomous navigation, there are a number of sensors. So with the two lidars actually hidden behind these bumpers and through the gap, it provides 360 degree view uh, around the robot. As well as mechanical bumpers as a fail safe in case the robot actually bumps into something so it can safely stop. Of course, we also uh, want to prevent the robot from falling down, so there are uh, embedded uh, floor sensors to detect uh, any drops so the robot stops uh, before that. So we also want people to understand the intentions of the robot. And for that, we have this LED strip going around the circumference of the robot. And as the robot is driving, as you can see, it actually indicates the direction that the robot is heading towards. And LEDs can also be used to indicate the warning signs or errors by simply uh, flashing in red. Also, we can customize the output of LEDs to show something fun. For example, the color of the Swiss flag. The robot arm placed on top of mobile platform is a Pirog V and it's an inherently safe collaborative robot arm. So the first thing you notice about uh, the robot is that it's fully covered in uh, soft uh, artificial leather material. This not only gives uh, a cozy feeling and soft touch to it, but uh, it also makes it safer because in case it bumps against something, it's uh, less likely to cause any damage. And on top of that, we do have an advanced motion control module which allows the robot to operate uh, in a compliant mode or so-called soft mode. So as you can see, you can actually press against the robot and it listens to you and then comes back to the position once it's released. So even if you press against it, it, it kind of bounces uh, away from you. And if you would like to move the robot just quickly without any special commands, you can actually just pull it and it drives around. And of course, as a collaborative robot, Leo has the collision detection system. So if somebody even programs something wrong, Leo will stop upon impact without uh, hurting you. This Leo is equipped with an interactive ring. It is basically a special ring containing physical buttons which have certain functionalities. Some of them have fixed functionalities while others can be customized to whatever you need. So for example, we can release the robot using by pressing this button which puts it in uh, the release mode that you can easily guide it around without uh, using any big forces and this is very useful when we want to program new trajectories and poses so then we lock it back and to save the position we press the save position button and then this uh, pose is automatically saved in uh, development environment might be. Leo has a specifically designed gripper placed on the robot. It has a camera module as well as uh, specially designed sensor fingers. Uh, so uh, the sensors on the fingers all around them are the proximity sensors which indicate the distance uh, measured between the finger and the object. So for example, if we have uh, some uh, object for Leo, we can measure in all the sensors, including the palm one, to see how far the object uh, is away from the robot, uh, so that we can indicate when grasping was successful, or uh, if, for example, the object uh, dropped away. And if we take it away, Leo will actually know what happened. So the fingers are easily interchangeable by undoing just a single screw. So if we take a torque screwdriver, we just undo the screw. And the finger is off. And here you can see the power supply as well as digital inputs and outputs. 
that can uh, control the sensors embedded in the fingers. And you can customize them the way you like. And here we want to add the prototype finger. So we take the same screw. It's just a 3D printed finger for uh, a project. And simply attach it with the screw. That's it. Leo has also easily interchangeable gripper head. So where you only have to undo one screw. Let me show you how. So first of all, we put Leo in the upright position. And to begin with, we actually have to undo the ethernet cable, which is connecting the camera now. So we simply unplug it. And we take the screwdriver and try to undo the connector screw holding the gripper. Um, once it's released, we basically lift off the gripper head. And here we can also see all the connectors for the power and digital inputs and outputs. Leo also comes with a, a number of web-based interfaces. Each interface is specifically designed for a certain user group. So let's take a look at them one by one. Home interface shows the status and allows to launch Leo functions in a simple manner for inexperienced users. Nursing interface is dedicated for medical and support staff observing Leo's current status, position, as well as scheduling various tasks using the calendar system. Node monitor shows the status of all the ROS modules, allows to configure, start, and stop them. MyP is Python-based programming interface allowing to develop robot behavior scripts, debug, and directly deploy them on the robot. Let's see MyP in action. It provides you the functionality like releasing the robot, moving it around in reality, and you see the actual state of the robot in the simulation. Also, you can open and close the gripper or move the robot back to the upright position, pause, and resume it on the way. Simulation is fully synchronized with the actual physical robot here. Also, it is very quick and easy to write robot behavior scripts. For example, we want to make the robot move between two defined poses. So we basically use the existing API to write the functions and we can find the list of saved poses on the right of the window. Then we write a simple while loop to keep the robot going between the two poses. And we can see it working both in simulation and in reality. So how do we create these poses? Pose editor allows us to save new poses and we can either move the robot by hand in release mode or use the manual control interface seen here. The robot can be moved by controlling the end effector position in Cartesian coordinates or move each joint individually by pressing plus and minus buttons next to the defined joints. Once finished, we can enter the name and save the pose. Using the poses, we can create full movement paths as seen here. Editing paths is as simple as dragging and dropping various poses into the path editor, and we can use the play button to see the exact trajectory that the robot will execute in simulation. Once verified, we can deploy and test it on the real robot. There are many MyP behavior scripts for Leo. You can create your own custom ones or use the existing ones. For example, to create a new map of the facility, you simply launch the script and drive the robot around using remote control. It automatically creates a new map using the sensors on board the robot. Once finished, we save the new map and Leo is able to autonomously navigate around. Additionally, we can add waypoints, virtual obstacles, and no-go zones to adapt and improve the navigation. Hello, my name is Frederik Zwilling. I'm head of the Leo software development, and I would like to show you today Leo's decision engine. It provides proactive autonomy and reasoning capabilities. To find the most suitable action for Leo to do, it processes the robot's information about the environment with a set of common sense and action rules. Therefore, Leo can figure out when it's a smart time to go charging and when it proactively searches for tasks such as entertaining elderly or distributing drinks. The decision engine is based on the logical programming language Prolog. Here you can see a simplified example for a charging rule. 
The decision engine should propose the charging action when the following conditions are satisfied. The robot has information about the current battery level and the charging threshold. If the level is below the threshold and the robot is allowed to drive around, it should go charging. Here, the threshold and the driving allowed predicate can again depend on other parts of the world. After the action proposal by the decision engine, a priority selection compares the task to inputs from the user and calendar schedule before the action is then executed. An advantage of the decision engine is the flexible and important reasoning system. It allows compact and clean situation classification without huge nested case distinctions. Therefore, it allows Leo to handle the complexity of the environment and make intelligent decisions about what to do. Leo runs a number of uh, AI algorithms to enable uh, environment understanding and complex behaviors. For example, it can uh, detect people by uh, using uh, skeleton tracking and detect the pose of the person, as well as uh, he can detect and identify people. Also, two people and even three or more. Hi, my name is Michael from FMP Robotics and I'm the head of Care Robotics. Uh, Leo is deployed at several healthcare and research institutions across Europe. Leo has great features which enable uh, the robot to be deployed very easily and to be useful from the very first day. Leo complies with all relevant GDPR um, re regulations, so data protection is ensured. Furthermore, Leo also complies with ISO 13482, which is personal care robot and can be easily used also without additional safety uh, measures. Leo provides different levels of softwares for end users with no experience with robots, for intermediary users and with users with a lot of knowledge and skills in robot programming. So this versatility makes it a very useful tool for research but also for practical applications. The functions of Leo range from activation, um, quality of life functions like playing music and activating via therapy, to transport tasks, to physical support tasks for people with disabilities, and go on to security and also hygiene tasks uh, like disinfection in COVID-19 times. So this versatility gives also a great base for researchers and practitioners using Leo. Hello, I'm bringing you something to drink. Here is your drink. Please take a sip. Drinking is important. So Leo is a mobile robot, not only in terms that it can drive around, but it's also easy to transport. You can bring it to various facilities just by a regular car. And when we transport it, we basically just fold it into the confined position, just like this. And by putting it on the frame, we can actually place him in the car, bring to wherever we need, unpack it and get it running in no time. I hope this presentation gave you a good understanding and insights about our professional personal robot Leo, and that now you understand its capabilities. So if you see any possible applications in uh, your facilities or would like to get to know uh, more information about the robot, please get in touch with us. Thank you so much for your attention. Mm -hmm.